Way to go, Jerry. You're all over it. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. So good to be together. Hey, we are doing some real classic hymns. I don't even know if we've ever sung for all the saints before, this particular one. We'll see what happens, right? All right. And our theme today is what? Anybody pick up on what the message is about? What? Oh, that's interesting. Um, it's on John the Baptist. So if you looked at your menu today, it's all about John the Baptist. And so um, we're going to dig deep into that. There'll be, um, yeah. So please stand as you're able. Let's welcome one another with a shalom or whatever's good to you. You can remain standing for our opening or gathering hymn. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For his holy name and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for gathering us here this evening to center our lives on you, to learn from you, to follow you, to praise you, give honor to you. Lord, today as we learn about John the Baptist, may we be inspired by his life, your calling upon him in his specific role. And may we grieve with Jesus and the disciples at the loss of John and his death but also to recognize that he fulfilled the purpose of preparing the way of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. I think it's the children's message time. So come on, children. Come on up. Here we go. Get fired up, man. Get fired up. Let's go. Let's go. You're taking one for the team, Thaddeus. We really need you now, man. We really need you. And now he's hiding. 
Oh, got to get your shoes on. Got to get your shoes on. All right, way to go. Way to be bold, man. Come on up. She won't bite. She's really nice. Yeah, he's giving you the look, huh? Look at that. Yeah, she's sweet. And she's sweet. I baptized her some years ago. And she just sprouted up like there's no tomorrow. It's unbelievable. Okay, so what we're going to do is John the Baptist spoke on behalf of God. Okay? And I want you to get the idea that he had a loud voice. Okay? Do you guys have a loud voice at times? Can you, can you be really loud? Yeah. Okay, so I want you to be loud. I'm giving you full permission. And you, you don't need permission. You'll do it, really. Right? Okay, so what I want us to do is... Um, you can go down the left aisle. Well, no, I'm going to give Thaddeus, you go that way towards your grandparents, okay? And then you, why don't you take the right aisle, and I'm going to go up the middle, okay? And um, now we got ha- we, ha- um, we, we got to say something. Um, let's, do, um, let's do the words, prepare ye, prepare the way of the Lord. Can you say that? Prepare the way of the Lord. And I want you to do it just like that girl. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go like this. See how, see how much louder that is? Did you notice the difference? Doesn't that make a difference? Okay. So Thaddeus, you go that way. Get your, get, your, get your megaphone ready. Okay? Go like this. Can you go like that? Put your hands up. Can you do this like this? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So Thaddeus, you go that way. Carrot, you go that way. Okay? And then we go, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Let's go, Thaddeus. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Well done. You can go back to your seats. I never know what I'm really going to do. I used to fear children's messages, and now they fear me. Ha, ha, ha. God does amazing work through the voice of the prophet. As you can see, we will be highlighting scriptures from Luke 1 and 4 and Isaiah today and a few others as well within the message. But what is the role of the prophet? Think of it as a megaphone for the Lord. The primary role of the prophets in the Bible was to speak speak with the people about the words and will of God into their specific situations. The prophets served as God's megaphone, so declaring whatever God commanded them to say. All right? So they had an inner thing with the the Lord saying, speak this. And what would they say? What's the phrase you often read in the Old Testament? Thus saith the Lord. All right? That's in the Old English. Did any of you grow up in a one-room schoolhouse using that language? Yeah, yeah, King James and all that kind of stuff. All right, well, that's kind of what we were talking about, okay? So what's interesting is that God himself defined the role and function of the prophets at the beginning of Israel's history as a nation. From Deuteronomy, it says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. Now, that's certainly the role of the prophets, but he's also talking about Jesus to come. But I love the definition, right? A prophet in the Bible was someone who spoke the words of God to people who needed to hear them. And so what was the role of John the Baptist? Love that picture, huh? That was his best portrait, okay? Remember, what did did we just do down the aisle? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Okay, you know I have to do this, right? I grew up in the 70s, right? Who watched God spell? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, I showed that video a few years ago, and they were all dancing around. So can we all stand up and dance? Remember that? They're all over the place, you know, 70s with the bell bottoms and everything. It was, it was kind of funny, I thought. But All right, so what do we know about the life story of John the Baptist? Okay, he was born in the first century CE, Jewish prophet, revered in Christianity as the forerunner of Jesus. 
sources of his life include the four Gospels, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the Book of Acts, and the historian Josephus. You've heard of Josephus, right? So he wrote about the times and the places in that era. Mother was Elizabeth, a cousin of Mary. Who's Mary? Mother of Jesus. Good. Oh, yeah, it says that. <laughs> His father was the priest Zechariah. As a young man, John lived in the Judean desert. He was either a hermit, so living on his own, or he was a part of the group called the Essenes, right? And what did we discover among the Essenes? What? Yeah, I think so. But there was also a lot of the scrolls that were hidden in the caves. Okay? He attracted many people right around 28 CE as a prophet in the Jordan Valley. When we say Jordan Valley, what's the Jordan? The river. Okay. He preached the imminent wrathful judgment of God and called on his hearers to repent and be baptized. What does it mean to repent? Yeah, kind of turn around. So let's say you were going in this direction, and it was off. It was sinful. It was not following the way of the Lord. Kind of do a spinning move and go this way, right? That's repentance. Okay, very good. Um, Jesus himself came to be baptized by John shortly after his, he started. And then John was in prison for criticizing the illegal marriage of Herod Antipas and was executed after Herod's stepdaughter, Salome, who demanded his head as a reward for dancing for the king's guests. Did anybody watch the episode? Who went to the movie theater on Wednesday night? If you're seeing we're missing some couches, they are in the theater. We had 21 of us there. It was delightful. And so we got to see this in action. We're going to see a clip from that today, and another clip from a previous episode, so we can understand the dynamic of John the Baptist among the people of his day. All right? So there is John. That's a better photo, right? That was a good photo op. So what else do we know? What did he wear and eat? Yes, it says, now he was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist. Anybody got their leather belt on? I couldn't find camel's hair in my outfit. It, locusts and honey. Now, I don't know. I, I've never tried it before. I think chocolate-covered locusts would be my preference. But, yeah, so, and they're a little crunchy, but still fine. Um, all right, so we got kind of a gist of that. Now, in the chosen of, for this week, we see that John's life story unfolding as his ancient mother, and I mean ancient meaning that she was old, right? She was old. Um, and, and she encountered Jesus' mother, Mary. And they celebrated the humble calling that they both had upon them. They knew that God was up to something, the Holy Spirit was at work. Ultimately, what happened to Zechariah? Yeah, he, he couldn't speak anymore. Now, for some women, you're going, is that all it takes? Right? Get pregnant and they won't talk anymore? A little harder, but okay. But God made him mute for some months. And sorry, ladies, that doesn't work today. The narrators of The Chosen help put together an emotional tie to this wild wilderness preacher. He was a boy, right? Just like Jesus. They were cousins. Oh, they certainly had different purposes and personalities, that's for sure. But, but God the Father spoke through each of them. They were God's megaphones, if you will. So from John 1, it says, Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. And John did not fail to confess, but freely confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, well, then, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? Again, going back to Deuteronomy 18. He said, no. Finally, they said, well, then who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied, in the words of quoting Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way 
for the Lord. Now the Pharisees, who had been sent, questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John said. But among you stands one who you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Why have a prophet prepare the way for Jesus? It's like gardening. Any gardeners here? Anybody getting revved up? My wife certainly is. This past weekend, Chris and I were preparing the soil to grow seeds that would bear much fruit. Much fruit? We began by digging out weeds. That was not exciting to me. I kind of think of weeds as sins in our lives. They prevent the health of the plants from thriving. Like our sin prevents us from thriving, from living the abundant life that God intended for us to live. John came to have people admit their sins, to confess them, and to repent. That is, to turn away from their old way of living so as to recognize their lostness, their need for a Savior, for that ultimate Messiah to come, for the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. Now let's go back to gardening. Then with our neighbor and church member, Jim Lumsden, we tilled or rototilled the soil to loosen it up, preparing the way for the seeds and helping it become good soil. And often, what helps soil be at its best? What do you need to add? Manure. Manure, thank you. I knew somebody would be able to declare that. I knew we were in a farming community. Somebody would use the language, right? We all need a little manure in your lives, right? Okay, we won't expand on that, but you know what I mean. It, it can help us grow dependent on God in a good way. You know what I mean? Right? You go through the hard stuff, and you depend on God. When we, when we have it all together, we don't turn to the Lord. But it's in the storms of life, when the rain pours, when the sun is overbearing, and when we get stressed through the summer droughts, that makes us even stronger and more dependent on God. As Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, and it's best we abide, that is, that we remain connected to Jesus. John and Jesus are quite a bit different from one another. Their personality and their purpose that God intended for each of them in that prophetic role of being a megaphone for God, that is, for speaking on behalf of God the Father. John the Baptist, while waiting in prison, asked a few of his students to inquire with Jesus if he really was the Messiah, the one, right, who is to come, or should we expect another? John thought Jesus would bring in the new kingdom and that it would be strong with force. Jesus needed to reframe his mission back to the original reading, if you remember back at Luke chapter 4, where he is at Nazareth. And people are going, hey, here's the kid who grew up in town. He wasn't that great of a student, but he's going to read from the scriptures. And, of course, he's unrolling it, and he reads at a particular point. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And if you remember the scene, then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back slowly to the attendant, and sat down. He sat down on a chair right before him. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And imagine him saying this, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. How did they respond to that? Blasphemy! Are you kidding me? Are you calling yourself God? Oh my goodness. And what did they want to do? Run them out of town, okay? Several of you saw this clip a few weeks ago. So I'm going to use an old clip, but it tells the story of John the Baptist from Jesus' viewpoint and from others like no other. And it's important for us to understand this, okay? And so again, 
it's his impact on the region. It's long, but it's outstanding. So let's watch this now together. Like, Who here has experienced John the Baptizer in some way? I know some of you rejected John, but some of you believed his message. He has had a profound impact on so many in this region. And these are two of his disciples, so let's welcome them. Hmm? Some of you may also know that John is currently imprisoned by Herod in Machairus. I think it would be instructive for us to hear what's on his mind in the midst of such challenge. It's a difficult question. It might be better privately. It's fine. This is healthy. <clears throat> he sent us to ask you if you are really the one who is to come. Or should we look for someone else? Say that last part again. Should we look for someone else? Hmm. For those of you who could not hear, John the Baptizer, my cousin, who has prepared the way for me, is now questioning if I'm the Messiah or if maybe we should keep waiting. John is getting impatient, yes? It's one of his quirks. He has been in prison a long time. Word reached our ears about what happened in Nazareth. That you said the spirit of the Lord is upon you to proclaim liberty to the captives. If you say you are here to free prisoners, then why does he remain? He rightfully wonders why you would allow his entire ministry to be halted by an impostered king. Proclaiming liberty to the captives can mean more than just freeing inmates. There are many kinds of captivity that keep people. Is that what we're supposed to tell him? No, that's just for you. We heard our former comrades Andrew and Philip have gone to the Decapolis. Is that where you're planning to launch the revolution to overthrow Rome? I have something in mind for the Decapolis. And it will be revolutionary, but probably not in the way you're thinking. What are we supposed to report back? Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The mute speak. And the poor have the good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. I will always be offended by blasphemy. As should all of you. You saw what happened to his daughter. You know this isn't blasphemy. I did not see what happened. Your supposed rabbi disrespected me as a holy man. Another sign of his evil spirit. And they also don't know any of the details that happened. He is hiding something. And I cannot stand here and allow you all to be deceived by his sorcery. Even if I'm the only one willing to protect you. Go. Relate to my cousin what you have seen and heard here today. And add to that, the dead are raised as well. And tell John I love him. Did my response to the baptizer's disciples sound to any of you like a rebuke? Yes. I can always count on you, Nathaniel. Many of you were baptized by John. I myself was baptized by him. You heard how strong he was, how passionately he believed. And yet now, even he has questions. When you went to the wilderness to see him, did you expect to see a reed shaken by the wind? Someone in fine clothing, like those in king's courts? Or did you go to see a prophet? Prophet! A prophet, yes, 
And I tell you, John is who Isaiah and Malachi spoke of. What did they say, Big James? Behold, I send my messenger before you who will prepare the way before you. Yes, and this should tell you something. Among those born of women, none is greater than John. And even he has questions. Another demon-possessed blasphemer, and you call him great. He called your religious leaders, you and men of God, vipers. Are you going to say something? I think his silence is his response. And here's what's so wonderful, though. None are greater than John here on earth. In the kingdom of God, the one who is the least is even greater than he. And John himself would say the same. So please, listen carefully. Do not waste the time right now to hear the truth that I have for you. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yet so many in this generation are missing it. Do not miss it. Those of you who have rejected John's message of repentance and those who are now rejecting mine, you remind me of the children in the marketplace that play games while the adults are busy. And you know how they pretend to be adults in a wedding or even a funeral. You are like the children who refuse to play. Whether it's a happy game or a sad game, it doesn't matter what it is. And like Aesop's fable, the others say, we played the flute for you and you did not sing. We sang a dirge and you did not weep. You and those in your order, Say John has a demon because he lived in the wilderness, preaching repentance while refusing bread and drink. And now the Son of Man comes, preaching salvation while eating and drinking and dancing. And I'm called a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. It doesn't matter what is put in front of you. You will reject it. Beware of this. Wisdom means nothing if it's not acted on. Wisdom is justified by all her works. As you see what is happening to those around you, as you see the lives being changed by repentance and salvation, do not ignore the evidence of the kingdom of God. Woe to you if you do not receive it. Uh, pardon, no, I would like to remind everyone uh, that Quintus has imposed a limit of 25 people uh, for all outdoor gatherings in the latter part of the day. Uh, by my you know, estimate, uh, uh, we will very soon uh, be at risk of detainment. So now what we're about to experience, if you haven't seen this episode, it, it's, it's the change of events. Um, and so, uh, again, it, Jesus and John, it's not like they hung out all the time together, but there was a relationship. And, and you will experience the grief of Jesus. It's a powerful moment. You will also um, I, I forget how much the clip shows, if it shows the disciples grieving as well. I think that might have been cut off. But in any case, to understand the dynamics of what's going on here and all that had to be laid out to get to the point of John's death. But again, it's significant for us to understand that as part of the story of Jesus going to the cross and how he prepared the way.
Oh, that's a nice plate. Silver? Only the finest. Normally intended for a royal wedding banquet. Requested by King Herod himself. Why are you laughing? I've never been to a wedding banquet. <laughs> but I'm on my way to one. What's that mean? Oh, never mind. You wouldn't get it. Are those your final words? You wouldn't get it. Just a few more miles. Elizabeth, none of your relatives is called John. I know. Zachariah. But... What is this about? Is she doing this because of what happened to you? Jesus the Nazarene. Abner. Shalom. Bless it. I, you. Bless it. I, you, Lord, our God, King of the universe. John, son of Zechariah and Elizabeth of Judea, here on this day by order of Herod Antipas the Tetrarch, you are hereby sentenced to death by the head of the tribes of Feel the grief? The beauty is Jesus knew this was happening. He's God. He knows. And yet the beauty of his humanity, he weeps. The wedding banquet awaits. And to see that beautiful scene where John turns his head and sees the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Ah, beautiful. Let's pray.
Lord, you had a purpose for John on this earth. You had a purpose for his parents, as old as they were, to conceive a child. You had a purpose for Zechariah to be mute. A purpose for John and Jesus to be cousins and to be the prophets who would speak your word to the world. Lord, may we celebrate the gift of John, knowing that he did indeed prepare the way for you to be the Messiah, to show that you are the Son of God, to show that you are the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Amen. Let's take about 15 seconds to just reflect and then we'll sing, we'll stand and sing on the Jordan's back bank. Please stand. You may be seated for the offering. The offering song is the same as last week. I'm hoping the words show up on the screen, and if they don't, I have them right here. And I will do them a cappella, and if you remember, you can join along.
to hear with my heart, to see with my soul, to be guided by a hand I cannot hold, to trust in a way that I cannot see. That's what faith must be. When the universe fell from his fingertips, he decided he wanted some fellowship. But the man and the woman would not submit, so he made a better way to hear with my heart. To hear with my heart, see with my soul, see with my soul, to be guided by a hand I cannot hold, to trust in a way that I cannot see, that's what faith must be. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world, through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Please join me as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with a Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. Bless the work of Lutheran World Federation, International Council of Churches, and the ELCA International Leaders Program. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. Bless farmers and gardeners as they prepare the soil for this growing season. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. Help the relief efforts in Gaza, the Ukraine, and Sudan to bring nourishment and shelter to the refugees and victims of war. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, Protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, 
victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. We pray this evening, especially for those family and friends listed on our screen. Carson, Stephen, Sarah, Mark T., Gerald Norrell, Andrew, Tim, and Tim, and those serving in the word, and those who have returned home. And at this point, any other ones that you would like to pray for, either aloud or silently in your heart? God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you and invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. Bless all those we serve through Family Promise, All People's Gathering Table, Lutheran World Relief Quilt Ministry, and our Soup Troop Ministry. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Lamb. Lamb's blood. Put around the door frame. Spared the life of the firstborn of the Jewish people as they left Egypt. Jesus is the Lamb of God, and by his blood, our sins are forgiven. See, with, with his disciples, he broke the common bread, gave thanks to his heavenly Father, and said, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After the supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's join in the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's celebrate the gift of the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Please come to the table. All are welcome.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Tonight is the closing evening to Lily's performance of Little Women. Do I understand you guys went? How was it? It was awesome. That's great. So we've got four tickets. We're going tonight and uh, looking forward to that. Um, I don't know if there's any open spots or not, but I just wanted to tell you that. So keep her in mind. She's very excited. She gets very excited, but she gets a little nervous too, as I would freak out. All right. Uh, the Chosen, season four, Wednesday evenings at St. Olaf. Who was there for the movie on Wednesday night? Was it good? It was very good. And what kind of Scooby snacks did we have? Fresh hot popcorn from the big popper kind of deal. And what else? Fresh chocolate chip cookies, baby. And, and of course, we had nerds for your family. So we were ready and pre prepared, right? Okay. So they're just looking at me, what? But I know you guys love nerds. So, um, yeah. So consider joining us Wednesday evenings, um, 6.30 p.m. And, uh, and we got couches and everything in there. You can bring your own lawn chair if you want, if, you know, or bring your own recliner, whatever it is. Um, all right, give blood, give life. You got anything to say about this? Where's our boss? Oh, she's out there ready with Scooby Snacks. So Monday, the 22nd, you can just show up or you can book it. Kentucky Derby, what is that? I don't even know this. Who, who brought this up? So it, it's, a, it's a Buffett Stuff It, live music, games, and prizes. It's a fundraiser, and then the funds will be used, some of them will be used for the Christmas um, so the big lighting of the Christmas tree and nativity scene, all that good stuff. Okay, got it now. All right. Common scams and frauds. Is that like, is tomorrow the 21st already? Yes, so that's going on. If you want to figure out and so you don't get scammed and all that kind of stuff, tomorrow after service. Anything else? All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please stand, and we'll sing our sending hymn. is right. 
peace serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.